So, um, so I met I met Nick the other day um, when I came. Well, I came into Cornwall and he messaged me, um, and uh, he had a couple of G Wiz in the in the shed, and he also said that it's, it's cool to come and stop over, and it, he's got an amazing permaculture garden, doing some great things here. Um, so today we thought we'd kind of bring this old G Wiz back to life. So the idea behind this one, um, this old DC, is to use it as a run around around the permaculture garden. He has an AC which we might bring back to life too for road use. Um, so what we are using are these huge old um, deep cycle batteries. Um, three were good and uh, we've got one under charge um, but unfortunately half of them were dead. <laughs> um, so we're going to see if we can get the old charger working because it was um this old charger was apparently modified to work with charging um lithium batteries because this had lithium conversion in it um but those batteries are dead and so we're just going to see if that charger works and outputs 48 volts um and yeah so we'll see we'll see how that goes everything else um is all connected inside um i mean we managed to pull it we we had uh Two 12 volt, two 10, two 11 volt batteries, and we were able to pull it out of the shed and drive it up to here to work on it. So it's still got life. Um, there's nothing too wrong with the car apart from some, well, a cracked windscreen and uh, the rusted out uh, battery trays, which is normal, but that part doesn't matter for using round here. I think we figured out the colour wiring for this. Um, apparently, it's USA code, so ground, green is ground earth. White is supposed to be negative and black is supposed to be positive. But it's so, but as it's AC, apparently if I get those two wrong, it may not be much of a problem. Um, so yeah, I might go ahead and wire that up and give it a test. I suppose the worst thing is it will blow a fuse, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? But there we go. Testing this old charger. Have you got the voltage meter? And I can't hear anything, so it might be dead. Yeah. No, I don't think there's anything in it. Unless the fuse has gone in the plug. The um, this is the other G Wiz that's hiding here. Um, it's an AC. It's an AC uh, Rever I. So you've got it's the newer structure with the Lotus engineering for the 25 mile an hour crash test. No, um, unfortunately the rats have got in here. That's the only real issue, I think. Um, it probably needs a new set of batteries aside from that. Um, there's a bit of flaking on the um, on the rear uh, on the rear arm where the motor sits, but I don't think it's gone through. So there's a chance we could get this one on the road. So that's going to be another one of our um, little projects while I'm around is to see if we can get this thing get this thing running and um, hopefully get it MOT'd. There you go, so batteries are stripped, seats are out, um, we're just going to bring it out and... <laughs> you think of that tractor? Yeah, it's in the other field anyway. There we go. <laughs> so this is the AC. <laughs> so here's the DC and the AC out. So we've just put the batteries from the um, from the DC into the AC, just to give it a. Um, cleaned it out quickly as well, um, just to give it a quick test because that already has the charger in it as well which means we should be able to fully charge the 12 volt batteries off of that so here we go, we're just going to turn it on so everything's working I mean switch the lights on there we go, now try it, put it into forward and give it a remember that, remember how to use the handbrake So there we go, we have we have power, we have life in both of the cars. And apart from the state of the wishbones, unfortunately, um, yeah, unfortunately the wishbones and things 
need some work, but if it's only surface rust, um, it may not be too bad. I mean, otherwise, it's good for it's good for an MOT apart from a little bit of concern around there. But yeah, otherwise, all good. And um, we have two working G whizzes. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is to, um, to plug in plug in the mains cable and see if the charge is working. Here we go. We're going to plug this in. Now let's go in, now if you switch the power on. You want the boot open? Um, yeah, we can do that. So if you go and switch the power on, let's see if we have life in the charger. It sounds like it. I don't see any. Oh yeah, the charge lights come on. Amazing. So we have charge. Amazing. So if I put the multimeter on. Okay, so about to test the multimeter. It was 49 volts before. Um, let's see what it's reading now. Well, it's 49.1. But... Two. Okay, so it is going up. Looking at. That's probably your multimeter. <laughs> There's a bit of corrosion on the terminals. Hmm. We'll check it in a moment, see if anything changes. Figured out the issue. Um, the AMS was stopping it from turning on, so we've got the hum from the charger, and now if we test the voltage. We're up at 57 volts. Now I wonder if there's a way to get the EMS to function with it. Um, because what it does actually does, it'll prevent, because it's lead acid that we've got in here, it'll prevent it from damaging when you get to 48 volts. But we could even just plug this back in once it's charged. Um, but the problem is it defaults, the charger kind of defaults and it runs at 40 amps. So um, we'll have to see how that goes. It'll just keep a close eye on the voltage. Um, is all the charging regulation stuff built into that charger for these, so that it doesn't float charge I mean, and all that? This does a lot of guiding for it, so I don't right. know. Um, but then, then, so that but then that, that, but then that is related to the six, um, to the six volt batteries too. So that's maybe why it's not working, is because the, because yes. that would regulate that would have the six volt sensors which we've taken out. Yeah. Um, there might be a way to use the sensors to plug back into here, um, even to even to get the. Uh, energy sensor working on there as well but um, I haven't figured that part out yet um, so this the charge is working um, with the EMS unplugged um, so yeah we have we have the ability to charge these packs so here's the G Wiz is this one is driven by Richard Morby who's kindly turned up in his G Wiz and tent to hang out and help out with stuff. We've got it running on super fast. Got it running on four deep cycle 12 volt telecoms batteries at the minute. Um, and Rich is going a wee bit too far. Rich, back her up a bit. If you reverse it down to here, we've got power in the cupboard there. Oh, okay. So, got our permaculture shed there with a pond to reflect light in. A little bit of PV just on the roof. Driving like a beauty. Nice and dusty. Considering keeping the rat look going. There you go. There we go, beautiful. Nice driving, Rich. <laughs> Ready? So, um, what we've actually discovered here is that the charger will work if you unplug the EMS, but you're putting 48 volts directly into these packs, which um, with lithium is no problem, but with lead acid... It's 40 amps, um, isn't it? Yeah, it's 40 amps into 166 amp hour battery, so I'm not sure how that works. But what I've actually done is plugged all the EMS back in, um, and in order to get the charger to work, we just have to connect all of these together, um, all, these, all these hoops, and, um, and then screw it into, into the positive 
Literally all of them? Yeah, that's what I did and it seemed to work. So, um, yeah, if you want to stop the video for now, um, I'll, unless you want to... Cool, yeah, we'll wire it up and then we'll show you again. for the terminal afterwards. I'm not sure if we need one. What we could do eventually is shorten down all of these wires. Yep. And we need a longer bolt really. Um, what I will do is just... Yes. Great one. thinking. Gives you a bit more, doesn't it? Now, I'm not sure if we actually need number one, which was that one. Because I believe one of them was to gauge the, um, the level of the battery. Oh, it's just a huge mess. <laughs> Now is there um, like safe spanners to use for doing this? Or would you put like tape on them or anything like that? Just or gotta just... be careful. Just gotta be careful. Um, no short, no. Right, so let's see what happens now with the charger. No contact in these two terminals, bad news. Yeah. So here we go. Plug that in. Is it not doing it now? There we go. There we go. Charger is on and if we test the voltage now, um, it should be charging. Sixty. And that will now control. I don't know why it's not stable though. Maybe it's because the batteries are so, so knackered. <laughs> These batteries have been sat in a shed for about five years with unknown... Oh, that's just turned off again. Has it? Maybe it's not liking the, uh, the signal. The light is on. Yeah. Maybe one of these, I'll tell you what, maybe one of these fuses is gone. No, they're no problem. Right. They're not one of those things that usually go. So, so we were getting a bit of awkward charging um, with these. Um, these were charging up uh, to 12.9 and these were down at 12.2. Um, I, because they're in series, I don't think they're balancing properly. So we're just we're just topping these other two batteries up to see if they hold the charge. Um, we've just got a 24 volt um, charger here. So um, that might be what we have to do. Um, just uh, keep them balanced this way. And then the eventual idea is to have a solar charge controller. We've got one that's 60 amps. Um, so we'd have solar charge where we can decide if we need to charge 48 volts or balance cells so you could actually it can do 12 to 48 volts so maybe have crocodile clips and then you can choose how many cells you want to charge or top up or balance or whatever so um yeah just gonna see how this works and if um and if it's all good we'll take it for a proper spin later B, B mode. That's without hardly any weight in it. 